Hi everyone. Today we're looking at reading matching headings, which is something that comes up a lot in the IELTS academic reading. So it's good to be ready to uh, understand what headings are and how to match them. Generally, during the exam, what you'll normally see is a passage and a list of headings, and you have to match the headings. So we're going to talk about that today, um, how to identify them and how to use a technique to speed up your answering of this question because there's not always a lot of time. <laughs> so time is precious, as we say in English. Um, so matching headings, important to be ready for this. And uh, in this exercise, we're actually going to try to do the exercise ourselves so that we can get into the habit of doing this in a really, um, a really efficient way. Um, so what is a heading? I think that's the first thing we have to define. It, it, what exactly is it? A heading generally is a title of a paragraph. Um, it is the, the title is the general topic or the general idea, the main idea of a paragraph. So it's basically a sentence that summarizes what that paragraph is. So it's not a detail of the paragraph. It's not extra information. It's actually the main idea. So once you know that, you know what to look for, right? Um, so uh, this is what generally you're going to see on the computerized test. So um, I'm just moving my own uh, image up here so that it doesn't block what you can see. So in the computerized test, what you'll normally see is on the left, a series of paragraphs. Now, generally you'll see about six or seven paragraphs, not just four. Uh, this is all I could kind of fit on the page today. Generally, you'll see a lot more. The text might be much longer, in fact. And you'll see those big numbers at the top, the one, two, three, four, um, and at the top of each paragraph. And then on the right hand side, you'll see a list of headings. Um, and those headings are listed in Roman numerals, like one, like an I for one, II for two, II for three. So, um, so those are the headings. And on the computerized version of the test, you'll be able to use your mouse to actually drag the title over to fit into the correct box. So it's pretty uh, easy to do that. Uh, it's easier maybe than the paper-based test. In the paper-based test, it looks like this. You'll have, again, a series of paragraphs, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, but the headings will be uh, with kind of empty blanks on the side. So you just have to write in the number of the heading so that you can you can pop it in. So you, you look at the correct heading and you write in the number of the heading uh, in the blank. So as you can see, the paper-based test looks quite different. The majority of you, of students, will be doing the computerized test. I believe something like 80 to 90% of students now are doing the computerized test. So you can probably expect to be dropping and dragging uh, during the reading. So matching headings, um, some points to remember. We, you're not looking for uh, supporting information. You're not looking for details. You're looking for the main idea of the paragraph. So that's really the idea of this exercise. Uh, in terms of time, keep an eye on the clock. You only have 20 minutes for this task. And don't forget, you have about six, maybe even seven paragraphs. So try to read each paragraph and find the heading in about three minutes, maybe less, maybe just under three minutes. So you need to be able to scan the paragraph, read the title in less than three minutes. So you're reading for meaning, okay? Paragraphs are not too long, so it's not too bad. It should be okay. And don't forget to give yourself about two minutes at the end of 
the task to go back and check your answers. You always need to leave yourself two minutes at the end of each part, in each IELTS part, to check your answers, right? Because we all make mistakes. So this is the technique on how to match headings. This is what we'll be speaking about today. So read the paragraph and choose the heading. It sounds pretty easy, right? Read the paragraph, choose the heading. So when you look at your text, just read the first paragraph and then read through the headings and choose the correct one. So don't read the whole passage. Just read the first paragraph. This way you can move more quickly and more efficiently. If you decide to read the entire text and then go back to the titles, it will be confusing. And you may have forgotten information that you have read during the course of the passage. So just take your time, read paragraph one, and then go back and read the titles. We're going to try that now. So this uh, text is, this passage is about Madagascar. And we're going to start by reading the first uh, paragraph here. So the Republic of Madagascar is the fourth largest island in the world. It is located in the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of East Africa. The country of Madagascar consists of the main island and several smaller islands. Madagascar separated from India 88 million years ago. Its isolation in the Indian Ocean resulted in unique biodiversity. 90% of its animals are not found anywhere else on the planet. However, the country's ecosystems are at risk due to human behavior and industrial growth. Okay, so we now know that the text is about, you guessed it, Madagascar. But as you look at the titles, uh, the titles refer to a lot of different aspects of Madagascar. So let's have a quick read through the titles. A brief history of Madagascar is number one. Two, a unique biodiversity. Three, deforestation. Four, consequences of deforestation. Five, Madagascar's climate. Six, the location and geography of Madagascar. So in order to help you to answer the question, you can look out for key words, and this will really help you. So <clears throat> in the first paragraph, in the second sentence, here in red, you can see it says, Madagascar is located in the Indian Ocean. We also see the word biodiversity here. Let's go back to the titles. Number one, history. There's nothing about history. Biodiversity. Yes, that word appears. Deforestation. No. Consequences of deforestation. No. Climate. No, that doesn't appear in the text, either as a keyword or as a synonym. The location and geography of Madagascar. Yes, location does appear. If you go back now to the paragraph and scan it, you'll see that uh, it talks about the location of Madagascar and the islands, how it's separated, but it doesn't go into great detail about the history. It's mostly about its location and its geography, its uh, landscape, its uh, physical. So we know immediately the, the answer is number six. It's the last heading, the location and geography of Madagascar. Okay, let's try paragraph number two. The island was first settled approximately four centuries before Christ. Various ethnic groups inhabited the island throughout history. The Marina ethnic group became the most prominent tribe and in the 19th century, the island was ruled by Marina nobles. In, 1890, in 1897, Madagascar was colonized by France and later gained independence in 1960. Madagascar is now a constitutional democracy led by its president, Harry Rajanaramanapinanya.
Ah, <laughs> that was tricky. <laughs> That's a difficult word. Um, so, um, if you look at this paragraph, look at the tenses, we can see that the text is referring to the past. Was, inhabited, became. We also see the key word history. So I think you've already guessed what the answer is. The title of this, or the heading of this paragraph is uh, number one, a brief history of Madagascar. Brief meaning short. It's not a big history of Madagascar. Okay, so we've managed to find two headings. Let's continue. Number three, Madagascar has a tropical climate. The warm rainy season is between November and April. There are storms during this period which have caused enormous destruction. The cooler dry season is between May and October. Okay, everyone, I think this is an easy one for you, right? Because firstly, we have the key word is climate. And secondly, it's quite a short paragraph which describes the climate and weather. So we know immediately, very quickly, that the answer is number five. Madagascar's climate. Let's move on to the last paragraph, number four. 90% of Madagascar's biodiversity is endemic. The unique wildlife includes lemurs and chameleons, both of which originate in Madagascar, and exotic plants such as orchids and baobab. Many plants are used in medical treatments and herbal remedies. There are also several endemic freshwater fish as well as unique spiders and insects. So um, there might be some words you don't recognize like endemic or wildlife or lemur, chameleon. These are very specific words, but in general, you'll probably see that the main idea of this paragraph is related to plants and to animals. So because it, it talks specifically about plants, um, herbal treatments, fish. So you may recognize some of those words as being types of animals. So if you go back again to the list of headings, um, we'll see that probably the best answer here is, can you guess it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Number two, the unique biodiversity. So again, it's this is quite a a tricky one because the word biodiversity does appear in paragraph one but we know that paragraph one is about the geography of Madagascar it's not actually about biodiversity but number four is so that's why it's important to go back and check every time just in case just in case because it's easy to make a mistake so what I would propose to you is to take a couple of examples like this from IELTS practice test and just test yourself. Give yourself 20 minutes to do it and, and go through the test. Make sure you give yourself two minutes at the beginning and two minutes at the end to do the pre-check of the headings and then double check your answers at the end. So just to recap on our technique, Read the first paragraph, find the correct heading. Move on to the next paragraph, find the correct heading. Keep an eye out for key words in the heading and in the text. But again, always be careful that the key words indicate a similar meaning because they might, they might not, it might be a trick. Um, make sure the heading is the main idea of the paragraph and not a detail. Once you have this technique down, you'll find that this question is probably easier than a lot of the other questions in IELTS reading. And, uh, and again, with the practice, you'll learn how to speed up and you'll be able to get this done uh, faster than you might think. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and good luck in IELTS reading matching headings. Thanks a lot now. Take care. Bye.